Welcome to our webinar designed to enlighten you about uh, the Rockstar CAs that are possibly right underneath your nose or possibly want to be attracted into your life and into your practice to help you grow. My name is Dr. Tom Preston and on behalf of Full Circle Coaching and Consultant, I welcome you to the webinar tonight. Uh, we've got a lot to cover and I'd love to just, uh, without too much further ado, get you know, dive right into the uh, material for tonight. Uh, we're going to be together for about 55 or 60 minutes, so uh, nestle in, enjoy yourself. Um, if you're someone like me that likes to take notes, I invite you to do that. There's going to be a few opportunities to go through that. Before I get um, started, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about why uh, I do what I do or why we do what we do here at Full Circle. Um, the entire team are people that have invested in and are part of the carpet community, whether they're uh, docs or CA trainers or otherwise, CA pat or chiropractic patients. And, uh, you know, speaking on behalf of the team, I can tell you that we love chiropractic and we love what it does for people. We've all had personal stories. I've been a practicing chiropractor for almost 30 years, and I would really love to see, our team would love to see more people benefit um, from regular chiropractic care. But, but sadly, that's not happening right now. Statistically, the profession is stuck in a rut. It's not growing. Heck, when I graduated chiro school almost 30 years ago, I would hear you know, people talk about the, uh, we're almost at the tipping point. We're at that like 10% or 12% or 15% or wherever they put the tipping point at. And my goodness gracious, they're still saying the same thing today. We're at the tipping point. We're almost at the tipping point. Well, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like much change over the last 30 years. And in fact, there's some evidence to support that we have a negative growth in the profession. As we get calls uh, almost daily at Full Circle for practices that are not growing, that are stuck in a rod. Sadly, right now, there is an unofficial um, notice in the profession that the five-year attrition rate for new graduates is around 25%. In other words, 25% of the grads who graduated from chiropractic college this year will not be in the profession five years from now. They'll be doing something else. That is one of the reasons our profession isn't growing. Why are people leaving the profession? Why are we stuck in a rut? Well, I'll tell you, there's many, many different uh, causes for that. But I think some of the things that we're here to talk about tonight um, with respect to CAs, and to the tremendous role that they can play in your practice, in your business, in your life, and in helping us grow this profession and helping more people get under chiropractic care. That's why we do what we do, and that's why I hope you're here tonight. I'm sure there's different reasons why people are here. I'm, I'm assuming that you probably, everybody here has at least one CA in your practice, and you're likely or suspicious of or understand that they could probably play a bigger role in growing and managing your practice. I know certainly in my practice, um, you know, it was an instrumental and pivotal part of my practice to have my CAs uh, to be rock stars and to be well trained and to continue the training. In my opinion, CA training never ends. So we're certainly going to talk about some important constructs tonight, but please don't think this is a flash in the pan or a once in a lifetime thing. You should be training and look at training as being an ongoing part of your protocol. I actually feel that, you know, that that should be a part of their job descriptions to be absolute rock stars. Some of you may already have CA but they're, they're just not that motivated and they're just not that inspired and you're wondering why I mean you've been given you know some cookie cutter training templates or standard contracts but you and I both know that that's usually not enough um, of a reason for, for CAs to be completely engaged and empowered and become the rock stars that we know that they all can be right maybe there's some people on this call tonight that are here because you want you're looking to hire or recruit somebody new or, or maybe to expand and, and, and bring on uh, somebody to replace somebody right and I you know maybe you realize that there's very common mistakes I see them every day in my coaching practice and hopefully you can avoid that or I know you can avoid that if you're willing to pay attention uh, not be having one eye on the Netflix series or you know uh, scrolling Facebook or whatever if you want to engage and be with us tonight I promise to give uh, a lot of content and a lot of value tonight, right? Because there's a lot of docs that are working pretty damn hard and they're doing, focusing on the wrong things. They're focusing on lower dollar per hour activities. And I can tell you that that's not going to get you anywhere very fast, right? Tonight, we are definitely going to go over the three lowest hanging fruit, the three areas of training. It'll give your CAs the ability to put more revenue into your practice this year. And you may be the exception, but I've yet to, as I travel the world and speak, and I've been training now, coaching for over 20 years, almost 20 years, uh, I've yet to meet a doc yet who says, yeah, I don't want to make a bigger impact on humanity. No, I don't want to make a bigger impact on my community. No, I don't want to help more people see the benefit of the amazing care that I offer. No, I don't want to make more money this year, doc. Ah, just a, 
just a bit of a joke on my part. I don't want to do that. No, of course you want to do that. You want to make an impact. That's one of the reasons that you're taking time away from your life, away from your family, away from your television, away from your Facebook scrolling to be here and to uh, be with me tonight. And I applaud you for that. I celebrate that. And uh, I really hope that uh, you get the value out of what it is that we're offering tonight. As I promise you, if you're willing to pay attention, we're going to deliver a lot of content and a lot of value. Um, as I already stated, we'll be here for around 50 to 60 minutes. And uh, I promise to do my best to stay on time. I value my time and I value yours. Uh, this program is something that we've worked diligently at, something we've been testing and training now for about six months and uh, probably six months of work or maybe a little longer, eight or nine months of work to get it to that level. For those of you that don't know me again, my name is Dr. Tom Preston. I practiced in a small uh, city, about 75,000 people in northern uh, Canada, northern Ontario, called North Bay, Ontario. Okay. We ran, by some people's standards, a fairly high volume practice, five to 600 patient visits a week for, for quite a few years. And I had two part-time, not full-time, two part-time team members that allowed me to do that. Here's actually a picture of me. Yeah, I'm not all that terribly proud. I think I got a bit of a hockey hair mullet going on there, but uh, this was uh, one of the teams that I ran, uh, Sandra and Sharon, who were uh, absolute rock stars. And you know, I can tell you that I could not have generated that kind of volume if I didn't have a great team. There's another picture. This is the mayor doing a ribbon cutting where he had a, a kids' day event where we had 456 children under the age of 12 through the clinic in one day. We had the mayor there. We had the police, the radio, the TV stations. We had the fire department. Uh, it was a, a pretty big splash. Uh, our conversion wasn't terribly high there. We only had, I think, 28 uh, kids start care as a result of that event. But I tell you what, we put chiropractic on the map. And I never could have done that without my team, right? My team was really responsible for, for helping me grow my business and grow my practice to the level that we did. And, you know, again, I never, ever could have done that without the proper systems and the training that we designed, acquired, or created as a result of really thinking through how to serve humanity at a higher level. A four-week waiting list for new clients, new patients during the, uh, you know, the, the, the peak times of my practice career. And again, I never could have done that without my TA. So in my definition of success, my version of success, um, I definitely could not have done that by myself. I definitely couldn't have done it with just your average, you know, uh, CA who is just there to warm the seat and answer the phone and, and take a few bookings or maybe handle a few transactions. I had rock stars. They were trained. They were retrained. They were inspired. They were motivated. They were empowered. And I want to share all of those secrets with you so that you can... Uh, uh, get a chance to expand your presence in your community and do that. Because the thing that I found that I love to do the most, I love to connect with the people, I love to adjust them, I love to enhance the life force. And if I wanted to do that and just do that and let delegate and assign tasks to my CAs to do the rest of it, I knew that I had to have rock stars. And that is why uh, we did what we did. Because you know what? Here was the thing, you guys, right? My highest value is my, is my family and the connection that I have with them. And I was assured of being home for dinner every night with my family instead of doing the things that could have been done. I mean, it ended two nights a week at 6 p.m. And unlike a lot of docs I talked to whose office hours end at 6 and they're home at 6.30 or 7 or 7.30. One, one doc right now is getting home a closer to quarter to 8. And it's like, you know what? I don't want to judge people if that's their, their passion and their path, but that wasn't mine. I wanted to be home. This is a picture of my daughters. I'm sure some of them are going to absolutely die thinking I shared this picture of them when they were younger. But, you know, this is my daughters. I've got five daughters, my wife, and I have five daughters. And I wanted to be a part of their life. Dinner hour, we were a little bit like Little House in the Prairie family, you know, the old Charles English stuff. I wanted to be home with them. I wanted to celebrate with them. I wanted to have dinner with them every night of the week. And we had dinner at 6.30 every night of the week. The two nights that I worked until 6.00. I walked out of the clinic somewhere between 6.03 and 6.08. My CAs commonly walked out of the clinic somewhere between 6.15 and 6.30 because we both valued that. We valued our, our family time connection. And I'll tell you something, that's possible if you have Rockstar. So I want to share with you some of the keys and secrets. As I said, at least the three lowest hanging fruits that I'm aware of to empower them, motivate them, and help them uh, provide more service to you, you know, to your practice, to you, to the community, so that you can generate more service and more revenue as a result. Because you know, here's the thing right now, you guys, there's a lot of struggle in the profession right now. As I said, the unofficial five-year attrition rate for new grads, 
Doc's reaching out to our company daily asking for help. The profession's not growing. I mean, what's up with the struggle? How did I have the experience that I had? Because let's be crystal clear. Those of you that know me know I'm no different than anybody else on this call, right? I have some strengths and I also have some significant uh, uh, weaknesses, if you will, right? Uh, just ask my wife. She'll, she'll straighten you out, right? I'm the same as you guys, right? So, you know, why is the struggle? Let's go over some of the things that we've observed in my uh, uh, almost 20 years as a coach consultant about what's going on in the profession today, right? As I said a little bit earlier, alluded to earlier, many DCs rely on templates and cookie cutter contracts when hiring CAs, assuming that they even have an appropriate, you know, contract or a contract at all, right? It should be customized for the individual. And on that should be an Appendix A, which has the outcomes that need to be achieved. We'll talk more about that as we go through, right? Many important policies and procedures are left out of the conversation for taking on the job as a CA. Law of attraction says what you put out is what you get back. If you haven't done your due diligence, if you haven't done your psychographic demographic analysis of who you want to work with, you don't have your rules for hiring, you don't have your outcomes assessment uh, clearly stated about what outcomes they need to achieve in order to be great at the role, if you're not looking at the uh, financial policy of exchange, if you're not looking at the office policy for uh, uh, what it means to be a part of it, if you don't have a unique hiring proposition, if you haven't done your homework and you're not putting that energy out there, it's no wonder that you're not attracting an amazing CA. Because, you know, again, I wanted a pro. I wanted somebody that saw being a carpetic assistant as a career path, not just a reception job. I don't, I, it just makes me cringe when I hear docs talk about they have a receptionist. No, you don't. You have a chiropractic assistant, someone who assists you in delivering the art, science, and philosophy of chiropractic to your community for the betterment of humanity. That is different than a receptionist. So if you're a person that has a receptionist, I'm going to suggest to you that you might want to consider upgrading the energy that you're putting out about what kind of a CA you want to attract to your team and why you want to attract them and do the due diligence to have the right person there with the proper policies and outcomes defined you know, in advance before you ever get there. Because if you don't have a written, agreed upon set of outcomes upon hiring, it's very likely that you're going to get a rock star CA, right? Now let's be clear. I'll tell you a quick story, you guys. This can backfire on you. I'll tell you the dark side of having to clearly define outcomes. Sandra, who I showed you a picture of earlier, she came to me one day in flow, and my team was uh, knew they never disrupted me when I'm in the flow adjusting people unless there was either a life-threatening emergency or the building was on fire and was like deathly ill. That was the only way that I was ever disrupted. Sandra shows up one time besides one of the adjusting tables with a plunger over her shoulder. And I'm like, uh, uh, I sensed your presence, and I'm thinking there's got to be a life-threatening emergency. So I said, Sandra, what's up? She's going, Doc, I checked in my outcomes assessment. It's not an outcome of mine to plunge the three-pound, you know, turd that Johnny just herked in the toilet that plugged it up. Here's the plunger. Have a great day. <laughs> so I'll tell you, there is a sharp side to having clearly defined outcomes. But I will stand by my earlier comment. You definitely want to have a properly defined outcomes assessment. People inherently want to do a good job. Most docs, most entrepreneurs are guilty of not getting clear on how to do a good job. What are the outcomes? The days of job responsibilities are done, folks. That's so 1990s. We want to create outcomes where people can bring their own flair. Uh, again, you're going to have a training template and you know, a procedures manual for how to give them some idea, but then you want to bring their own flair, their own personality, their own charisma into it so that they can do the job to the best of their ability. Okay, so you need to get clear on what it is that required to do before signing a contract, as I already said. Heck, I just recruited a new uh, bookkeeper a little over a year ago. The very first thing I gave her was a copy of our purpose uh, statement, mission statement, and our values. I said, if these don't resonate, we got nothing else to talk about. They resonated deeply. I then gave her a copy of the outcomes assessment. She, I said, can you achieve these outcomes? She looked it over, got back to me the next day. She said, I can achieve 33 of the 37 of them. She said, I don't understand clearly what these are, so I don't want to commit to that until you tell me what they are. I explained it to her. She goes, I can achieve those. I looked her in the eye. I said, can you achieve this? Do you want this? She said, yes. I said, now, then let's have a conversation about what it's going to be before we ever talk about signing a contract. Right? People want to do a good job. Right? Again, when you're clear about this, ignorance is bliss. I was in a lecture in Philadelphia one time where a doc told me a horrific story about not getting clear on the outcomes that needed to be uh, uh, achieved, not getting clear on the consciousness of the person they wanted to have, comes out of one of adjusting rooms and, and somebody in the waiting room apparently had said that they had a headache 
and she's reaching into her purse like a friggin' pharmacist and she's handing out Advil, not only to that person, but to all the other people in the reception area as well. Oh my God, that is just not wise, uh, nor something that I would want to see in my chiropractic practice. So again, get clear upon the outcomes. And a little, little tidbit, if you're a note taker, jot this down. You always hire for consciousness, you train for skills. You hire for consciousness and you train for skills. I can tell you another reason why they're struggling in the profession right now, because a lot of docs haven't taken the time to realize the value they bring to your team and how much money they literally make for you each and every day. Because if you realize how much money they made for you, you'll appreciate, you'll appreciate them a whole lot more and they're going to do a better job because they're appreciated. We're going to actually do a little exercise here in a few minutes to help you see how to do the quick business math to see how much you should value and appreciate your team members. Okay. Because again, on a uh, pretty simple level, folks, right? There's a lot of moving pieces going on throughout the, the day in a chiropractic office, right? One of the struggles of most docs is they're very capable. They're very driven. They're very bright. I call it the entrepreneur's dilemma. You're self-driven, self-actualized, and self-responsible. And sometimes out of convenience, you just take on a lot more responsibility that should be in the hands of your team. As I, I can remember early on in my career where I could hear myself say things like, ah, oh, you know, it's just easier for me to do it myself. Or, you know, it's just faster for me to do it, so I'll just do it. Or have it, here's, the, here's the one that used to just now make one of my coaches cringe. Say, you know what, I might as well do it myself because no one can do it as good as me anyways. Ah, my God. There's just so much more that could be delegated out there if you're willing to. So no wonder we're struggling. No wonder we got people leaving the profession. No wonder we're not growing as a profession. Because these are things, unless you went to a very different school than any of the ones that I'm aware of, and I've lectured at many of them, certainly was a student at the Canadian one, uh, I'll tell you, they're just not teaching this stuff about leadership and, and, and the self-development that goes into being a great leader as part of the mandate, right? You get the privilege of being the only person on the team who gets to assess, diagnose, and adjust, right? You invested a ton of money in your education to earn the right to do so. Why are you peeing around doing lower activities, lower dollar prior activities. Why are you doing things like filing? Why are you doing things like inventory? Why are you doing things like shoveling the snow and you know sweeping the deck and all of that stuff? Heck, here's a picture of me and my Superman outfit when I was lecturing in Dallas a few years ago, literally going over this. Because if you take that entrepreneur's dilemma to extremes and you look at all of the things you're doing that you could be delegating, you know things that you say, oh, I'll just do it myself, it's easier, it's faster, I could do it better than anybody anyways. You take that to extremes, you become super person. You wear the goofy red cape and the blue stockings, and you're out there doing things. And yes, I actually was on stage uh, to do that. There's a really weird story about moose knuckles. If you know me really well, feel free to ask me about it someday because uh, I may just have the hoots, but uh, actually, because it, uh, it was rather humorous, even though at the time I was slightly stressed about that reasons why there's problem why there's struggles in the profession right now right but you know what I'm sure there's some people that are saying okay is there an answer yeah there's an answer so here's a part of the answer do a time study see for yourself take a one week just take a one week snapshot break your your 168 hours down into half hour grids and write down every half hour what it is you're doing whether you're reading a book or you're adjusting or you're grooming or you're or what it is you're actually doing and when you look at that, look at the dollars per hour you could uh, have somebody else do that for, okay? So in other words, if you're filing, what could you pay somebody in the marketplace in your region to do that job for? How many dollars per hour? If you're doing anything other than the high dollar per hour activities that you got, you were educated for doing, you're literally creating a minimum wage lifestyle. If you're doing things for 15 bucks an hour and your time in the office adjusting the diagnosis is worth hundreds, it's costing you Hundreds minus 15, economically, it's, it's your brain damage for doing that. You're losing money when you can be paying somebody less than hundreds of dollars an hour to do the task. Now, if you're completely inspired by it and it's priceless for you and you just love doing it, that's a whole other conversation. Do the time study and see where it is. Because when you see the dollar per, the value of the task you're performing that your CAs could be doing, it makes it much, much easier to delegate. It's a mind shift. It's a pattern interrupt. He says, man, why am I doing this stuff? I didn't go to university to do this. I didn't go to chiropractic college to be inspired to, to do these things. Not to demean the task, but just to give the value to it. Because there's lots of other people in the marketplace who can't diagnose, who can't adjust, who can't give the amazing service you give. 
And that's why you've earned the right to be in fair exchange with the culture and earn the tremendous income that you're you know, here to uh, potentially generate. It's like I said earlier, look at this. If you're worth $300 an hour, you could be paying someone $20. It's costing you $280 to do the same thing that they can do. One of the, when I realized this and I wasn't inspired to cut my grass, it's one of the reasons I haven't cut my grass in 25 years. I want someone who's inspired to cut my grass to cut my grass. I want someone who's inspired to do my bookkeeping to do my bookkeeping. I want someone who's inspired to, you know, shovel my snow to shovel my snow. I want someone who's inspired to plunge my toilet to plunge my toilet. Matter of fact, I'll put a shout out to him. His name's Mark and he's awesome at what he does. Okay. So again, be clear. One of the reasons you may be struggling is because you're not seeing the value of delegating. You've got super person syndrome. You, you haven't done it the time to see where it is you're wasting your time on lower dollar per hour activities. Please, you know, jot that down and please, 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 please do the exercise. The Buddha said to know and to not do is to in fact not to really know. So don't just listen to this daddy guys, please take action on it. Your community is asking you to step up and step out and do a better job at serving them at a higher level. All right, so these are the problems and this is some of the reasons we have the struggle. What's the solution, Mr. Smarty Pants? Right? I can tell you that every doc I've ever talked to in, 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 in life, in practice, you know, in my coaching practice, really want to do two things. They want to serve more people and make more profit. And they want to do that while having more time to be with family and hobbies. In other words, they don't want to work more hours. They don't want to just be away from their family, their hobbies, and their sports. They want to be able to have their cake and eat it too. And there's a way to do that. But it revolves around having an empowered, uh, very, very strong rock star team. So a solution your C needs to be and can be and should be a profit generator in your clinic. So let's go through the top three things your CA can do. As we said, increase services, increase services, increase revenues. And there's two ways to that. There's by attracting more new clients and, and sealing the deal with them. And of course, helping people see the value of staying under care for longer periods of time. All revolves around more service and through more service, you have more um, revenue. When you've got your CAs doing the things that we're, we've talked about and will talk about, it leaves you more time for marketing and adjusting. It gives you more time to, to spend, you know, just in yourself and your own hobbies and interests or with your family. And, of course, more time for your hobbies and sports, as I just said. Okay? So let's go, and let's go through the lowest hanging fruit for the ways that we can you know, increase your practice revenue. But I don't want to just show you how to increase the practice revenue. I'm also going to show you how to increase the confidence of your CAs. Now, arguably, those two things go together, but there is some subtleties and distinctions there. And I want to make sure that they give you lots of value on this training tonight. Okay? I also want to show you how to enhance your company culture. If you haven't thought about the culture and your brand, I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about how important it is for your CAs to be an important part of that. I want to talk to you about how to turn their job, their receptionist job, into a full lifetime you know, career position. And in the process, of course, it's gonna free up your time, it's gonna reduce the mental clutter in your mind, the distraction of being fully present with your patients and your family. BJ Palmer talked about the adjustment with that something extra. And I contend that he was clearly talking about uh, adjusting with that present time consciousness. I tell you, being a chiropractic you know, patient and advocate now, as well as a doc for many years, I've been being adjusted now for, <laughs> Quite a few years, more than 40 years, I was adjusted as a child. And I can tell you, I can personally really tell the difference between a doc who's dialed in and present and one who's, who's not. And I tell you, being present, if you've got, we're worried about whether this was done and this hand it was done and if the billing's being done correctly and the phone's being answered properly and all of the details that your CAs can and will be looking after, I tell you, you're definitely going to have some clutter. Okay, so it's time to get this professional. It's time to serve your community at a higher level. So let's dive in. And let's get rolling with what it is we're going to do to, to uh, uh, get these rock star CAs going in your practice. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about the current reality. Average CA statistically lasts only about two years in most chiropractic offices. These high turnover practices may neglect investing in proper training in order to save money. I can tell you this is definitely a sign of a scarcity consciousness. If you're not investing in your people, you're not investing back into your business, you're not investing back into yourself. I've completely changed my attitude. I haven't invested in one mutual fund, one stock, one bond, one GAC, one piece of real estate, anything in over five years. I've been investing back into my own companies, back into my own team, back into their own training, their growth and development, as well as mine. 
simply because I have found over time that's what gives me my best ROI. Willing to contend or assume also true for you. Because here's the thing, you guys. The only thing worse than training someone who leaves is not training someone and then they stay, right? So again, we're in a bit of a tough spot right now. There is some cold realities to the profession, but again, don't panic. There are some solutions, right? Let's be clear. I contend strongly from consulting around this profession, around the, the planet, that people do care about who you have behind the desk. There's a difference between an empowered, enlightened, inspired CA and a receptionist, right? Your, your, your patients care about the skill sets that your CA brings to the table. Underperforming and uninspired CAs can add to your patient's stress and literally subluxate them further. You wonder why you're not getting better results? Maybe it's because you're not clearing people out because your staff is actually stressing people out. People want to be cared for by passionate, inspired people, right? It's, it's contagious. It's infectious. So it raises the bar in their own life and helps them, you know, literally want to be better people. In our office, Chiropractic office. I wanted if people somehow for other came in and forgot to get checked, forgot to get adjusted that day, I wanted them to leave feeling healthier and happier. Whether it's the tone of the voice of the CA, it's the smile, it's the confidence, it's the certainty, it's the enthusiasm, it's the quality of the communication they're having with the uh, practice member patient that day. Uh, it's about a tidbit or a tip that they learned on the case study of the week or a testimonial you shared or listening to what we at our team do is listen to uh, Chris Kent's on Pat Jen Temple's on purpose CDs to be kept up to date on the latest science and stuff, which we'll talk about. I mean, these are all things people can and will care about the quality of the person that you have behind your desk. All right. So let's, let's keep going. Let's talk about the three ways your CA can put more revenue in packs. Again, for clarity, this is not the only ways that they can help you increase your service and increase your revenue. I'm going to suggest to you that I'm going to first talk about the three lowest hanging fruits. And number one, by far, you guys, is recalls. I have never met a doc yet who loves to do recalls. Most people didn't go to university for seven years to do like warm sales calls, which is essentially what a recall is. But I can tell you that doing recalls is some of the lowest hanging fruit and some of the most unmined gold in a chiropractic practice today. And let's go through this. When your CA does the recalls, it creates more time for you to do other marketing or business activities. Okay? Again, I'm suggesting to you, or I want you to consider that this is not the highest and best use of your time. Your CAs can and should be doing recalls. But again, are they doing them properly? Are they using the proper templates or scripts? Have they gone over and done role playing with the proper CA trainer? I don't know the answers to that for you, but I can tell you they did in my practice. That's one of the reasons they were so doggone good at it. Recall patients already know the value of chiropractic. They just need reminding. Saying the right thing will let them know you care, which creates patient retention, increased PVA, which increases your level of service, which increases you know, your net net revenue at the end of the day. A person that buys from any business is 11 to 70 times more likely to buy from you again. So again, these are pre-qualified practices. These are warm leads. They're just maybe people who just you know got busy, they, you fell off the radar, whatever it is that happened nudging them and, and helping them see the value again of um, what it is that you do and the great service you provide for them and their families is phenomenal. As I said earlier, a database of inactive clients is, is just like a gold mine. When we do uh, professional practice appraisals, which we do for docs that are uh, you know, forming partnerships or bringing on a new partner or doing succession training or planning, um, I can tell you that when we see inactive clients and uh, properly done recalls, we know that there's a, just a gold mine there for the new person or the new partner that's, you know, that's coming in. All right, let's look at the second thing. The second piece of low-hanging fruit, chiropractic knowledge in both the science of it and the business behind it. This is something I've seen consistently in my almost 20 years as a consultant that adds tremendous value to the office, and here's why, okay? The more your CA understands chiropractic lingo, the more they can feel confident talking to patients, current and potential. When I pull CAs, when I do uh, in-office consulting, I can tell you one of the biggest reasons that I hear that they don't uh, talk to clients more about or you know, practice members more is because they don't feel confident. They don't feel uh, that they've got the same amount of information that the doc has, so they just, you know, they don't say anything, which again is, is unfortunate but a true reality today. The more you see understands the benefits of the care and the science behind it, you know, they're going to address patient question concerns that which normally take up your time. 
How many of you in the call, docs, have you know been through a service with somebody and checked them and adjusted them, and then you're ready to leave? And they go, hey, doc, can I just ask you one more question? And you don't want to be rude, but I mean, if you've got you and your CA uh, uh, educating, and you've got confidence in your CA because you've invested the time to get them proper training, to do the article of the week, to do you know listening to uh, a CA uh, a training series as well as end or you know audio uh, information series out there that many are out there, um, it's going to free up your time. Time is money. It's a it's a fairly simple construct. Yet many docs, probably even some of you on this call, are not necessarily following through on it. If they're going to understand practice testimonies and case studies and share the miracles of chiropractic because they're going to feel more confident about why those are that way. They're not just pulling them out of their butt. They're actually understanding the why because they understand the science. CAs Inspired will share testimonials. And, you know, basically you're going to see a full increase in both patient retention and referrals. I've seen it over and over and over and over again in our coaching clients when we get their CAs trained properly and increase their knowledge base about the science of chiropractic. But again, we don't just want them to understand about the science, we want them to understand the business, right? Does your CA know your practice mission and vision? Right? Because there's days it's just gonna get busy, it's gonna get confused, and they're gonna get lost. I just contend that a mission statement and a purpose statement, and there are the values that support that mission and purpose statement, are like North Stars, and they guide you and your team to help you, you know, be the best versions of you you can be. Make sure that your your team are part of that, that they're active participants in the creation and co-creation of those things. If you've had them in place for a while, make sure that you go through and have a meeting with them to vet them, to make sure that they have buy-in. Maybe there's a word or two they want to tweak or change, or maybe there's another one they'd like to add. Make sure that it's an active part of the business. Again, there's a huge difference, you guys, between you know having CAs who work with you and those that work for you. I will take one that works with me over five who work for me every day, but you gotta be willing to share. Marketing plans, do you even have one? Do you share it? Is it an experience of them, you know, to make sure your CAs are helping out with the marketing? I contend that it's mandatory. It's part of the contract you're going to have for your CAs, that they're a part of the, the marketing, um, um, both design and manifestation. It was a policy in our clinics, continues to be, that the uh, CAs had to share or add one marketing idea every Monday meeting. Make them an active part of it. Enroll them in the idea. Empower them. Have them work with you, not for you. I share the financials. Your CAs know them anyways. They know what it costs to get a, a service in your office, right? Let them know how much it costs to run the business. Your average chiropractic practice has 55, 50 to 55 percent overhead. Most people don't know what costs so much to run the business. They only see the numbers coming in on the front side. Don't be a scarcity-minded person. Share the knowledge. Share the costs because again, they are. They're, it's going to increase trust and buy-in, which is only going to be good, you know, for you and your practice members. But it's also a good way because, you know, the CAs are on the front line. They say, really, you're paying that much for your uh, internet service or for your telephone or for your bookkeeping? You know what? My friend that I, you know, do this with or go to church with, whatever, you know, they pay this. Why don't we, you know, do a, a, an analysis and see if there's ways that we can save money? Because I'll tell you something. They're on the front lines. They're probably just as good, if not better, than you are at seeing how to cut overhead. Right? It's only scarcity consciousness that holds people back from sharing their finances. Clear that block and see how absolutely refreshing it is. The number three piece we're going to talk about here is empowerment and confidence. When you empower and build the confidence of your CAs, both as human beings and as assistants, I'll tell you, one of the highest outcomes that we've seen is you'll see them well-trained CAs want to, want to, want to run the healthcare classes, right? And when they're running the healthcare classes, which in our full circle continuum is another important part of the uh, education protocols that go on in an office. It starts right with the first intake, you know, phone call or, or website visit. What's your brand saying? What's your culture saying? What's your flavor that you're putting out there? How much education are you doing? It can start right then. Obviously through intake, through reports, through healthcare classes, through uh, a, a table talk and through progress reviews and comparative exams and all of those things. Right now, if you've got a, a CA running the healthcare class, it gives third-party endorsement to the things the DC says, right? Shazia, our head CA trainer, man, she's a rock star at this. She just took this upon herself. And again, a lot of times they say things in a different way or in a slightly different format, and people are able to hear it better, and it just increases it, you know, the confidence and certainty that people have in the service. It also bonds them to the CA. Now you got somebody working with you, not for you. 
This, this healthcare demonstration should be written at a high school level uh, or less. You don't have to wow people with your knowledge and your, you know, your, your education and all your fancy big words, right? They don't get it anyways, right? So it doesn't need to be done by the DEC. If you're doing it, I'm suggesting to you that you could be saving a lot of time and energy and be uh, getting rested up, spending time with your family, spending time with your hobbies and sports, or doing other business activities, networking, marketing, other things, right? You have an empowered and confident CA, they're going to ask for referrals and get more families under care. You're going to get them inspired to generate more business, okay? I also would highly suggest that you get your CAs on a percentage of revenue profit sharing compensation model. <coughs> Pardon me. This is how I did it in my practice. And I can tell you it's phenomenal because now they're vested in the practice. Their revenue, their income, like yours, is tied to the performance of the business. We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but I want to just plant the seed. Well-trained CAs ask for testimonials and reviews, and let's face it, in this, this internet-based age, you guys, your reputation is something that takes years to develop and only minutes to sabotage. Your community needs to know how much your patients love your services by getting them online where new prospective patients are looking, right? More and more and more people are looking for professionals, dentists, chiropractors, optometrists uh, in the States, you know, GPs. They're looking online. Do you have a positive reputation? And if you do, how did you achieve that? Are you spending the time to do that? Or can you delegate that out to your CAs? Most times, you delegate it out to your CAs. You can and should be doing that, right? Testimonies and good reviews act as insurance against a bad review because, you know, there are possibilities to get bad reviews out there. The only way you can, you know, uh, defend against that is have a ton of good ones to really balance the perspective out. Because most people realize that some people are just, you know, out there to, uh, you know, say, Talk, talk trash, and they know that it's not necessarily rep, uh, an example of how you usually give you know, good care, right? Well-trained CA knows how to keep business, right? We've seen this uh, you know, in our mystery calls where CAs are happy to cancel appointments, but you know, are they willing to question the client and ask them what's really going on, and is there a better day, and is there, is there a miscommunication or misunderstanding, or like, what's going on, rather than just saying, oh, you want to cancel? Okay, great, well, I'll call us back later. No, there's a way to actually script that and do that. And rockstar CAs know how to do that because they've been trained. They can turn those cancellations into reschedules, whether you're talking about a daily visit or you're talking about a, uh, a new client, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about bonuses because bonuses, I want to just please, there's not a lot of docs out there that are using bonuses or good bonuses effectively. So again, if we're looking about ways to empower and motivate your CAs, I can tell you, uh, everybody believes in the law of fair exchange, whether consciously or subconsciously, and they want to be well compensated for what they do. So consider structuring the compensation away from dollar per hour. I think a dollar per hour thing is an okay way to start a new CA, but it's completely, in my opinion, demeaning and unempowering to have somebody pay them to say that they're worth $5 or $500 or $5,000 an hour. Your, your time is invaluable. How do you put a price tag on a human being's worth? I think it's actually demeaning, right? But when you can... Uh, as I said earlier, my CAs were paid a percentage of revenue, which was highly tied. Their, their compensation was tied to the positive outcomes of each and every adjustment, right? As a result of that, man, they showed up for work excited, happy, and knowing they're in control of their paychecks. I've talked to docs many times who say, you know what? Yeah, but if I pay my staff a salary and stuff, you know, well, then, you know, what if they get done early and they leave early? Who cares? If they're getting the outcomes achieved, why do you care how many hours are there? The psychology of paying somebody per hour is insane. The longer and slower and worse they are at doing it, the longer it takes them to do it, the more money they make. That's insane, right? Looking at salary or percentage of revenue are the two models that I think are there. They're going to help you build the practice. They're going to go the distance. They're going to work with you, not for you. Now, again, that's a whole other conversation or consulting package, right? But I can tell you, I'm going to bet you can understand how it really makes a difference in the attitude of your staff based upon the compensation model that you have set up and, and a bonus structure that you could put in place, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. All right. So let's do a little bit of a, uh, a recap here for yourselves, right? How many recalls do you currently have on your to-do list? Now, if you're not doing recalls, you're really missing the boat. And we should have another conversation about a, uh, some private executive coaching. But if, if you do have recalls, how many are on your to-do list? How much stress does it cause you doing recalls? How long has it been since the recalls were properly dealt with? Has it been 
six months, 12 months, 24 months. I talked to a doc the other day who had not done recalls in six years. Well, he says, you know, should I go back and talk to those people after six years? You don't even know if some of those people are even still on the planet for heaven's sakes. No, you shouldn't. You should have a better structure and strategy to stay on top of it, right? How many cancer, people that have canceled that you never talked to because your CAs are not, you know, well-trained and empowered and inspired and motivated, right? Whether he's talking about new ones or, or people that have called, called in for, you know, regular appointments, right? Do you see a radiating pause of energy throughout the day? People care about that. They, they care about who's behind the desk. They care about the positive experience. And quite frankly, so do I. As a practicing doc, I don't want somebody who's just up there, you know, warm in the chair, right? Are they passionate about the, the practice? Right? Do you and your CA have a professional relationship based on trust, respect, and honesty? Professional relationship. Or are they just a receptionist that you just think, ah, you're kind of nobody and I could replace you at any time? Well, if your uh, dream is to have high turnover, your dream is to, uh, you know, have somebody that's just, you know, basically there working for you, not with you, then, you know, don't build a professional relationship. Don't uh, train them. Don't do regular uh, progress reviews with them or quarterly reviews with them. Just, you know, bumble along and uh, continue to watch your practice mired in mediocrity. But I can tell you, it really does not have to be that way, right? So I hope already you've got, uh, you know, you invested a chunk of time here. We've been together for about 43 minutes, right? You, you've, I hope you've got some nuggets out of this. If you're a note taker, I hope you've got some nuggets. Uh, if you're someone that says, you know what? I've got what I need and I've been, uh, you know, monitoring Facebook while we're going, but kind of half-assed listening, you know, good for you. Uh, if you'd like to get some more value and like to go a little deeper into some of these concepts, then let's, you know, go through it and, and just really flush it out. Okay. So just hang with me for another 15 minutes or so, because we're going to go through some more details. And as I said earlier, I've got something to offer you that I think could make a huge impact on your practice and your ability to serve humanity at a higher level. Okay. So we already discussed that you should have a detailed written agreed upon outcomes assessment for your CA that clearly lets them know how to be great at their role, okay? So what I want you to do is I'm going to go through eight things here. And if you're a note taker, please, you know, perk up and pay attention. Stop scrolling Facebook, right? And have a look because I want you to grade yourself on these eight items that we're about to go through. So number one item out of 10, 10 means you're doing it awesome. It's an important part of your practice. Uh, one means you, quite frankly, suck at it or you don't do it. You don't know how to do it right now, okay? Then I want you to score yourself out of 10. Do you have written and agreed upon outcomes assessments for your CA that clearly lets them know how to be great at the role? Score yourself out of 10. Second one to score yourself on. Carpeting assistance job is no small-time job. How good of a job do you do at communicating that to them? That they're not just a receptionist, that they're a professional. You want them there for the long term. You want to invest in their training. You want to invest in their growth. You want them to work with you, not for you. Ten is you're really good at it. One, you're not doing it. Somewhere in between. Third one, we talked about the value of your time and why you literally cannot afford to continue doing low dollar per hour tasks. So if you're doing the things that, that only you can do in your practice, which is assessing or diagnosing and adjusting, everything else could be delegated. If you're really focusing on those high dollar per hour activities, give yourself a 10. Lots of low dollar per hour activities that you could be delegating to someone else, things like recalls, things like filing, things like inventory, uh, things like straightening up the magazine shelf. You know, just, I mean, there's just a myriad of things that could be done. Give yourself a lower grade, okay? The fourth one, we talked about recalls and why your staff should be making those calls and probably doing them better than you can. If they're doing them, how much training have you given them? So again, how effective is your recall system in your office? If it's a rock star, it's a 10. If it sucks, it's a one. The fifth one, we discussed sharing the knowledge of chiropractic science and philosophy to be a better assistance to your patients and the questions. How good of a job are you doing at communicating the art, science, and philosophy of chiropractic to not just your practice members, to your assistants so that they can be better educated and free up your time? Your rock star, 10. If you suck at it, give yourself a zero or a one. We also discussed sharing insider secrets of your practice, like the financials. Are you sharing full disclosure, both the revenue and expenses and the net profit of your practice? If you are, rock star, give yourself a 10. If not, give yourself something less than that. If you're doing it half ass, give yourself a five, okay? We know how far confidence and empowerment go in the expansion of your practice and to motivate your CAs to show up for work ready to manage and explode your practice. So if you're investing time, energy, and or money in, in expanding your CA's knowledge base and giving them confidence and personal empowerment 
as well as chiropractic empowerment, you know, again, give yourself a 10, right? If you're not, give yourself something obviously less than that. And the final one to score yourself on right now is the value of a bonus system to aspire a team and create for exchange. If you have a great model of exchange and you have bonus structure, some sort of a revenue sharing plan in place, give yourself a nine or a 10. If this is, you're still paying people hourly, you don't have a bonus structure that really inspires your team, give yourself obviously quite a bit less than a 10. I want you to add that up and see where you scored because uh, a rock star, you, you could literally have 80 out of 80 in terms of giving yourself a, 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 a zero to 10 on that. This is a little scoring system we've come up with, okay? If you score between zero and 20, your team and your practice is on life support. <laughs> you need some help, okay? You're, if you between, score between 20 and 40, your team's getting crisis care if you use the chiropractic analogy, but the Band-Aid appears to keep falling off. Definitely could use some help. Uh, if you got 40 to 60, your team's in need of, some, of, of a substantial adjustment, and, but there is hope for a quick improvement. You're, you're doing some things well. 60 to 80, you and your team are doing many things well and should be congratulated. And with some tweaking, some tweaking you definitely could be you know, a rock star team, making a bigger impact in humanity and generating more revenue as a result. Okay, so rate yourself, see the scoring, and then let's talk a little bit about uh, the solution. Because hopefully at this point, um, if you've been with me this far, you can see the value of growing your practice through training and motivating CAs, and, and hopefully you're going to trust me to provide you with a solution that we think is the best solution that we've been able to come up with you know, through our company here. For clarity, our, our mission statement at Full Circle is to awaken individuals to the power of authentic expression and help them realize their full potential both personally and professionally. And that's not just for the docs, but the CAs, the office managers, the tech CAs, the RMTs, the spouses, everyone involved in the equation of you realizing your full potential, both personally and professionally. For most of us, business is a team sport, right? A rising tide raises all ships. You can grow faster if the whole team is engaged and empowered and being you know, invested in and trained properly. So that's why we put you know, something together for you today, okay? Uh, I want to talk to you again about the biggest issue that most docs have, which is time. Because if you want to focus on running and building a great practice, you don't have much time left to train your staff. Hopefully you see the value of having a properly trained staff. Even with me to date and not falling asleep on me, you can see the value of that. But are you the right person to do it? Is, is that the best use of your time, right? It's because it's it's time to sit down with your CAs and teach them the Coles notes of your chiropractic university education. It takes time to develop internal policies and protocols. It takes time to create scripts for new patients and or you know cancellation policies. It takes time to role play and re-role play and re-role play different scenarios in the clinic, right? See, I knew my time as a practice in DC was worth much more money adjusting patients than training the staff. That's really where the rubber meets the road in most chiropractic offices. I, and I would offer you, if you'll be humble enough to accept this, are the bottleneck in the practice. Everything had to flow through me, and there's only so many people we could see or serve per day as a result of that. Poorly trained and delegated activities meant we could not fulfill our purpose to our fullest and most passionate level. That was not something I was willing to continue to, to be uh, uh, you know, the bottleneck. I also understood the importance of trained and motivated talent at the front desk of my practice, and I also know I'm not the best at everything, so I can hire out where I can. I'm an excellent coach, you guys, right? But I'm better at coaching the docs and business owners who have the biggest impact on the practice. I recognize the weakness in our, our full circle team. And so that's why I've recruited, coached, and nurtured uh, right now currently two carpetic assistant trainers to help me grow a training program, develop those with the second biggest impact on your practice, true professional chiropractic assistance okay so i'm going to introduce you to our chiropractic assistant training program i would even you know sub delegate that our rock star chiropractic assistant training program as i alluded to earlier we've been developing and testing this uh actually testing it for the last six months we was in a uh, development phase for uh quite a few months you know pre that right because we wanted to have a program that we felt was uh, worthy of the brand and the the, the culture that we've created uh in our company Okay, so let's go through a, a, a little bit of data here, you guys, as we go through this, right? Because you may feel like your CAs are pretty good at what they do and, and that you don't have a need for what I'm going to share with you. But let me emphasize how much revenue you may be sacrificing by not investing in your team, all right? 
Typical adjustment is worth around $50 in North America today, more in Europe commonly. Uh, most docs uh, that are um, uh, seeing 8 to 16 patients an hour or so, do the math, they're generating 400 to potentially you know, $800 per hour. Okay, So what are you doing currently, even in a well-run practice, that your CAs could be doing? Are you doing things like recalls? <laughs> are you doing things like spending a lot of time chatting with the patients when your CAs could be doing that? Scans and other technical tests that could be delegated you know, out to your assistants? Are you doing things like processing x-rays? Are you performing you know, progress reviews or report of finding functions that could be delegated? That was something that my uh, new patient advocate did in my office. Are you sharing office procedures and policies with patients that could be delegated to your team? Are you sharing financial procedures and policies you know, with your patients? Are you, as we talked about earlier, are you running the healthcare classes when your CAs could be doing that? Uh, ensuring the patients feel, keyword here, feel like they belong and can ask questions at any point throughout the care. Are you creating a comfortable, pleasant, holistic environment for your patients? Again, your CAs could be uh, assisting in creating that environment when they work with you, not for you. Are you performing intake questionnaire duties or even doing some functional movement tests like a SAM test or functional posture picks, that sort of stuff? All of that stuff can be delegated out to your CA. So even if you're running a high performance office right now and you're doing some of these tasks that we just talked about, you could be leaving dollars on the table. You could be serving your community and humanity at a higher level by delegating even more than you currently are. All right. So for people that are thinking or considering about investing in CA training, what is it that we're going to teach your CA? Well, we're going to do scripting. Anybody can pick up a phone and make a call, but with a bit of magic and proper scripting that is practiced and believed in, and keyword here is practiced, it becomes second nature so that new patients get booked equals more revenue. How many people call in that actually never do a booking or they call in and then cancel because your CAs aren't trained properly? Give that some thought. Special appointments flow with ease. Patients get the big idea, stay longer, and refer their friends and family. Again, more revenue. I told you I was going to show you several ways to create more revenue in your practice. Recalls get scheduled and patients uh, continue their care. It increases retention. There's more impact on the community and more revenue. Missed and canceled appointments get rescheduled. Proper scheduling for office flow, optimal for you. You avoid time jams, right? Again, more revenue. Number one reason across the world, folks, that people leave any healthcare office is because of improper time management waiting for care, right? You got proper scheduling with a properly trained CA that has been professionally trained. You're going to have a lot more and better flow in your office. Your walk-ins and call-ins are going to convert to pre-scheduled appointments. Office and financial policy procedures become extremely transparent, bringing focus and clarity you know, to the table and to the work that you're doing there, right? Again, let's look at you know, things like terminology. Educational chiropractic is huge. Do you have the time to do that? Are you continuing, you know, continually redoing it? Once your CA owns that, they can share it. They can explain to a new patient what a subluxation is. That's commonly referred to as the three T's, Thomas, Toxins, and Thoughts. And they can explain it to patients in an understandable way and help the education process so that people get it on a higher level, right? Properly trained CAs talk about prevention of subluxations to keep your patients healthy and happy. They assist in that process. They can describe a subluxation you know, even to children because kids get it, and I, in my opinion, kids need care too. Parts of the spine, they understand that how the nervous system works. They can explain what the concept of innate means, right? They can explain the three phases of care in a classic chiropractic uh, paradigm. They can answer tough questions like, why do I have to keep coming back? Because I could stump a dog for three, five, ten minutes, end up running behind, ticking off the next ten people that are sitting in the reception area that are ticked off because they're waiting because there's a tough question that could be delegated to your staff. Okay, how about this one? Once you to go to a Cairo, you always have to go to a Cairo, right? How do you answer that? If you trained your team how to do that, properly trained CAs can answer that question quickly and easily. Can they explain the rigorous education it takes to become a DCA? Can they explain the value of, of all of the different diagnostic tests like x-rays and nerve scans and posture scans for them and their family? I'll tell you, in our office, uh, it was a, a uh, requirement that our CAs would refer, on average, two new clients a month. Not that many, just two. 
But I tell you, it's amazing how many practices don't have a standard like that, don't have an intention or expectation like that, and how many CAs are not building the business. They know how to handle the different excuses for canceled appointments. I mean, quite frankly, guys, is your CA a seat warmer just answering the phone, scheduling and taking payments? Or is your CA doing that plus bringing in new patients? Being creative and a part of the marketing team and you know, improving the, the quality of care that they offer. Are they doing the nerve scans or other technical stuff? Are they assisting patients with you know, intake uh, information? Asking the questions so the DC doesn't have to. You know, again, what you want is to, with, to bring the data forth. You don't necessarily have to be the one that's asking all of the questions. Your CAs could definitely be helping with that, freeing you up uh, to do other things in the practice. Are they doing the recalls, as we've talked about several times on this call? Are they educated in other alternative health care? You may have a multidisciplinary practice. Are they educated in what the RMTs, the naturopaths, the therapists, whatever, are doing so they can support the decisions and the recommendations you're making to, for supplementary care from other um, you know, people in your team if you're running an office like that, right? Talking to the patients while they're waiting, funneling in conversations about health and wellness mindset, not about the Raptors losing, not about you know, what's happening in the hockey series or what the weather's doing, but literally creating uh, conversations around health and wellness. And consistently upgrading policies and procedures you know, to make sure the office is flowing well. Good training instills confidence. Your CA owns their space. One that we'll see this commonly, people getting up there, you know, in their docs, in their CA space. Remember my mentor, Dave Martini, told me one time that uh, Rondo is, is rock star CA. Uh, he used to get up to the front desk and kind of pass her bother her looking at the appointment book. And, you know, she got a, a mirror that she held out. And when he kept poking over the desk, she held the mirror up and said, look, if you want to see, your, you know, what's going on over here, you want to see yourself that badly, take this mirror. You get back to your office and it literally just straighten them right out. I never forgot that story. You see a sharing the chiropractic story. Are they knowledgeable enough to talk about how to improve the office? Again, the difference between working with you and working for you. I contend that it costs about 15 K in today's day and age in the average chiropractic office in lost income to replace a CA. Basically due to the negative energy in the clinic, the lack of familiarity. It causes people to be less likely to rebook, refer, pay, I mean, this is a lot of attraction stuff on steroids, you guys. But when I first did this math, uh, when I started consulting back in the 90s, it was about 10,000. It's grown to about 15,000 in terms of cost, lost opportunity cost in your practice for you know, re, re, turning over your CAs. Again, if they're just a seat warmer, just a receptionist, how long are they going to stay? How challenging is it for them to be a seat warmer? Give them good training. Give them confidence. Treat them like the professionals they are and watch them you know, grow and become an important part of your, an even more important part of your team. If you're paying them a, a terrible salary and stuff, how long are they going to stay? What do you pay for? If you pay with peanuts, you're only going to attract monkeys, as one of the old sayings in uh, self-development, right? I mean, let's face it, you guys, right? If your CA is challenged and busy and their position becomes greater and it feels like a career, are they not going to stay longer? Does the educated or uneducated chiropractic patient stay longer? Does an educated or uneducated untrained or trained chiropractic assistants stay longer. Who spends the time to educate the patients? You do. Wouldn't it be more efficient for both of you to educate the patients? I contend it does. Case average in a chiropractic office is uh, runs between $500 and $3,500. It's the average amount of revenue a client leaves in the clinic over the lifetime of their care. The longer you help people see the value of staying under care, the more likely they are to, to maintain or hit that $500 to $3,500 or maybe even surpass it. Okay, let me tell you a, a short uh, case study here from Dr. Catherine. She chose to invest in CA training. Like many of my colleagues, life is busy and full. I love being among my practice members, helping impact their health, and also having quality time with my family and time for community service. But when it's time to bring on a new team member, the hiring and training process are not my favorite duties. Recently, I hired a new chiropractic health assistant and immediately enlisted the help of Dr. Tom's trainer, Shazzy and Bobby to help my new assistant get started quickly and successfully. The CA wears many hats in the office and I found the training to be comprehensive. The weekly calls and homework kept both the CA and myself focused and moving forward in the training process. As well, the trainings brought up good questions and conversations that have helped my CA and I enhance and solidify our relationship. Thanks, Dr. Bobby, for getting started. This will be a better year. Now look at the follow-up to this. Doctor, uh, lovely note from one of Dr. Kathy's patients she shared. Uh, it's an email she sent to us. 
just, uh, just wanted to share this wonderful email that arrived for Lydia today, her new assistant. This email is from a woman who was under tremendous stress, juggling many balls at home and at work. And for her to take the time to send this message to Lydia is a testament to Lydia's wonderfulness. I'm so proud of Lydia and so blessed to have her working by my side. Literally, this patient sent this to Lydia. Just wanted to drop you a quick line and let you know that I and her, her, her family appreciate your professionalism and helpfulness and general, general wonderfulness. I love that. I supervise seven reception staff, so I know what I'm talking about. Reception is not for everyone. It's harder than it looks. Thank you. You make a difference in people's days. How friggin' cool is that, you guys? That is the kind of stuff you get from a properly trained assistant. Okay? So let's go. If you're going to invest in your team, you can invest in some training. What's the investment? Our program sells for $17.95 plus tax. I want you to take action on this. If you see the value of what I've gone through, if you see the value of the CA training, of having a properly trained CA, and you don't feel like it's the best use of your time because of the things we shared to do that, then why wouldn't you invest $12.95? Why wouldn't I put some limiters on this to get you to take action? Do you know how sick and tired I am of going to chiropractic events and seminars and people telling me that they're struggling in practice and then I see them 6, 12, 18, 24 months later and they're telling me the same stories? Invest in yourself, invest in your team. Get the training so that you can make a difference in your community, make a difference uh, to humanity, and in the process, spend more time with your family and, 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 and make the revenue that you deserve. You're a professional. You make a huge impact on the culture. You deserve to be well compensated for what you do. So what's included in this training? It's a 12-module program done on a monthly basis um, uh, by our CA trainers um, where they do a, a customized call to customize it to your particular office, to your particular flavor of chiropractic, plus unlimited email support to answer each and every question that you have. So again, 12 modules, a monthly call, usually about 45 minutes, and unlimited email support, okay? Each module will be sent to your team on a bi-weekly basis. We found about two weeks is about the optimal amount of time. It doesn't overwhelm the team, but it also keeps them moving forward, right, uh, to ensure that they're getting the benefit out of it. You're going to receive a dedicated professional CA trainer for six months. Our CA trainers have a combined experience of um, over 25 years, and so we want to ensure that you're going to get the benefit out of all of those uh, years of experience, okay? After each module, there's a quiz to ensure accountability and ensure the training sticks forever. Uh, a lovely certificate will be given to your CA to be framed and hung in their office area with pride upon completing the training because, again, these are professionals. Why wouldn't they be getting some sort of a, a designation, some sort of a certificate to hang on the office with care? If you know this is important, you know you're tired of being stuck in a rut, you want to get going, I'm here to help you do that. Disclaimers. The availability of this program is limited. Our trainers have the capacity to start seven new offices at this time. We want to help you uh, take action. We want to help you move forward. We want to move the needle. We want to see more people under chiropractic care. The only way we're going to get more people under chiropractic care is if we have more well-trained offices, more well-trained teams, more well-trained CAs. That's why we're doing this training. I hope it's transparent enough, you guys, at this point, right? Training covers up to three CAs in your office if you've got more than three CAs. So in other words, this is a per office fee. It's not a per CA fee. But if you've got one, two, or three CAs, it's $17.90. covers all of your CAs. Every CA over three, we can be accommodated, but it'll be an extra $150 surcharge because there is quite a bit more work for our, our CA trainers to have to go through. Okay, so again, quick review. It's a comprehensive 12-module program over six months put together by my assistant, my CA trainers, but combined, I think if it's 24 or 25 years of, of, of uh, CA experience. And again, for those on the webinar, I contend that this program is worth thousands and thousands of dollars and save time for you, the docs, which equals more patients adjustments and more new patients acquired, okay? Again, this is Canadian pricing. Our company is run in Canada. It's Nexus is in Canada. For any of you on the call that are from different jurisdictions, perhaps America, um, you're going to really benefit from this because right now there's a 25 to 30 percent difference in the Canadian dollar to the U.S. dollar. So once your exchange rate is factored in, you're going to see your final investment be, you know, 25 to 30 percent lower once the final exchange rate is put into that. So how do you purchase? How do you go about doing this? Well, you go to www.fullcirclecoachingandconsulting.com. Okay. Or you can actually um, go into the, the uh, offer that I'm about to put up here on the uh, screen, okay? 
And we're going to load that up right now. And if you click on the links that are in that particular um, uh, piece of information on the side chat bar, once you input your address, the correct tax will auto-update. When we receive a notification the investment has been successfully processed, you're going to receive an email from our CA trainers over the next 24 to 48 hours introducing themselves to you and your CAs to work out the logistics of the program. We have a money-back guarantee on every product and service we offer at Full Circle, right? So for any reason, completely satisfied with the training after the first two modules, you're going to just take advantage of our money-back guarantee. Keep the content from the first two modules as our gift to you, right? And get 100% of your money back. We stand behind our products and programs, you guys. We only offer guarantees like this because we have confidence in our programs and the amazing people that deliver them. We don't want your money invested in something that doesn't grow your practice and move you forward. So if you're ready to create a rock star team that helps you build a great brand and a profitable practice, click the link in the offer and let's get started today. For those that are just kind of hanging around wondering what else there is, let's do a quick recap. 12 module training, monthly call, unlimited email support. Uh, we encourage and expect CAs to invest one to two hours per week on the trainings to really own it. Um, when you have that dedicated CA trainer, there's a quiz that they're graded on for accountability to ensure the training is sticking. You as the doc have access to the CA trainers as well for unlimited email uh, questions to ensure. And again, that 45 minute call every month allows uh, the CA trainer to customize it to your particular flavor. There's a nice training completion certificate when we're given to your CA. It can be hung and, and, and put up in their office uh, to, with pride. I happily stand behind the $17.95 uh, rate for the program. People are happily paying that because we want to grow the profession of chiropractic, because we want to get more people under care. We want to help you get out of the potential rut you're in and help you grow by getting the properly trained CAs. That's why we do what we do. And again, there's absolutely no risk to you. We have a 100% money back guarantee. If after the first two modules you're not satisfied, keep the modules and get back to us. No questions asked, no strings attached. We'll give you your money back and help you get on with the next phase of whatever it is that you're meant to get on with, okay? So, what would your practice be like six months from now? Is it gonna be similar to how it is now? Maybe even a little bit worse? What would it happen if you had a tap you could turn on to bring in twice as many new clients every stinking week because you've got a trained, inspired CA? Would your staff be able to handle it with a smile? Are the policies, protocols, and systems in place for literally a whole flood of new clients coming in? Are they documented and reproducible for anyone to walk in and take ownership? I mean, seriously, if you answered no, then how can you expect more patients than you can handle without the foundation in place? Let's put the foundation in place because the universe never gives you more of something you're not prepared to handle. Money's a good example of this in many people's lives who don't have a strong foundation and principles in place. The average uh, timeline for someone who wins the 649 or the, the, the lotto ball or whatever it's called, um, power ball in the States, 22 to 36 months and they're right back to the same level of uh, financial status they were in before. Why? Why is that? It's because A, people don't deserve it, but also because they haven't got the principles and the foundation in place for how to manage the money you know, properly. Don't put the cart before the horse. Let's get your staff trained. Return investments covered with one new patient. If you're a smart business person. You should be thinking about ROI. ROI is covered based upon literally thinking through uh, what is what the money I'm going to invest? What can I expect to get back uh, in return? If you don't think you're going to attract at least one new client over the next six months, it might be time to start thinking about a new CA. Okay, so get started today. It's been an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be able to hang out with you tonight. And I apologize for running a little bit over. Uh, it, it's not my intention. I just wanted to give you a ton of value, a ton of content, help you see the value of having a properly trained, you know, um, CAs. Uh, so that you could get the, the, the benefit out of what it means to have a properly trained CA in your office, okay? So again, um, getting some feedback here in the chat. I was hoping that uh, we could get to this. Uh, yes, we're definitely answering the questions. Uh, again, Kim, thanks for that feedback. Your CAs are doing this program and loving it. That's phenomenal. Uh, Carly was asking about if it's in U.S. funds, and of course, yes. No, uh, Sorry, no, it's in Canadian funds. Uh, Jeff, thanks for your feedback, man. I appreciate that. 
I have a CA that tried several times to offer a performance-based incentive. She always shuts away and she just wants an hour per hour raise, even when it could mean hundreds of dollars in her pocket. What am I doing wrong? Well, I would say, Jeff, you may have the wrong person on the bus, right? Um, so that's something, you know, to consider for sure. Uh, again, this with proper training, um, it would be pretty easy to tell. So thanks for your feedback, Jeff. Certainly, I'd be happy to have an off-camera call or chat with you to talk to you about, uh, about your CA and why they may be doing that. There may be a leadership issue there for the content for tonight. I think we've uh, been able to uh, get through what I wanted to get through. So, again, everyone, thank you so much for your time, for uh, being a part of Carpractic, for what you do every day. It's making a huge difference in the culture. And... Uh, I appreciate your diligence. I appreciate your persistence. Again, I apologize for running about 10, 12, 15 minutes over, um, but I thank you for, for being here and for uh, letting me be a part of uh, tonight for you. So everybody, wherever you are in the world, have yourself an exceptionally great evening, and I look forward to our CAs working with you and your team to a uh, uh, bigger impact on your community. Have more time for your family and your sports and hobbies and serve more people, make more money in the process. God bless and good night, everyone.